Welcome to St. Joseph's Parish on this, the seventh Sunday in Ordinary Time. Christ calls us today to love as God loves, generously, withholding nothing, greeting and forgiving even enemies and persecutors. Our entrance hymn is number 429, Blessed Be the Lord, number 429. Please stand. priest of the Diocese of Davenport, and I have been retired about three and a half years, and I'm presently uh, uh, supporting Unbound, an organization of sponsorship in 19 different countries of the world. I will speak to that later. I live in Iowa City. Jesus, uh, St. Paul reminds us that we are temples of the Holy Spirit. We are the crucibles. We are the... Uh, the containers, we are the agents of God's gracious mysteries, which are, of course, include mercy and his forgiveness of our sins. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God.
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, almighty God, that always pondering spiritual things, we may carry out both, in both word and deed, that which is pleasing to you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. reading from the book of Leviticus. The Lord said to Moses, Speak to the whole Israelite community and tell them, Be holy, for I, the Lord your God, am holy. You shall not bear hatred for your brother or sister in your heart. Though you may have to reprove your fellow citizen, do not incur sin because of him. Take no revenge and cherish no grudge against any of your people. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter, first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, do you not know that you are the temple of God, that the Spirit of God dwells in you? If anyone destroys God's temple, God will destroy that person. For the temple of God, which you are, is holy. Let no one deceive himself. If anyone among you considers himself wise in this age, let him become a fool, so as to become wise. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness in the eyes of God. For it is written, God catches the wise in their own ruses. And again, the Lord knows the thoughts of the wise, that they are vain. So let no one boast about human beings, for everything belongs to you, Paul, or Apollos, or Cephas, or the world, or life or death, or the present or the future. All belong to you, and you to Christ, and Christ to God. The word of the Lord. reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, You have heard that it was said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I say to you, offer no resistance to one who is evil. When someone strikes you on your right cheek, turn the other one as well. If anyone wants, you to, wants to go to law with you over your tunic and over your cloak as well, should someone press you into service for one mile, go for two miles. Give to the one who asks of you, and do not turn your back on one who wants to borrow. You have heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, that you may be children of your heavenly Father, for he makes his sun rise on the bad and the good and causes rain to fall on the just and the unjust. For if you love those who love you, what recompense will you have? Do not the tax collectors do the same? And if you greet your brothers only, what is unusual about that? Do not the pagans do the same? So be perfect, just as your heavenly Father is perfect. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord. quite a daunting challenge to be holy, to be perfect, not just perfect, but as your Heavenly Father is, and uh, one might wonder what that's all about. I uh, found a couple of examples of people who might have a clue to that in a recent magazine uh, presentation, 
These are called thoughts on treating others well. Quote, this is the only perfection there is, the helping of others, by that great philosopher, Andre Agassi, who is a great tennis player. Those who are happiest are those who do the most for others. Booker T. Washington. And finally, be kind, for everyone you know is fighting a harder battle. Plato, the ancient philosopher. So those are all ways of people who probably have come to this by experience or some sense of common sense, as we might say. And so, you know, Jesus says, not just an eye for an eye, not just evening the score, but uh, go the extra mile. You know, I say to you, and that perhaps might be something about perfection, forgiveness, be shorn of all the things that separate you from others. Now, Jesus is not counseling, uh, uh, you know, um, what do you call abusiveness or uh, just uh, rank injustice, but Jesus is saying that there's a sense in which we can um, sort of absorb that in a way that just nullifies all the kinds of anger and hatred. You know, we have a, we like to be able to say that we could transform the world. You're the temples of the Holy Spirit. You're the place that is called to be holy. Only God can be holy, we say, but in a sense, to call ourselves to some sense of reflection of the Godness who is mercy and forgiveness. So I come to represent an organization that might have some uh, help in regard to that, might be doing some of that in terms of its, uh, its mission. Unbound is a formerly known as the Christian Foundation for Children and Aging. It, it sponsors both children and older people in 19 countries, has 300,000 sponsors, people who are sponsored benefits of the program, and 260,000 sponsors. That's quite a massive uh, uh, aggregation of uh, support. And we live in an age of fear in which we're kind of caught up with all of the things that happened in the wake of 9-11, terrorist attacks. We find people who are ravaging uh, damage and great violence on people in, the, in, in just their own singularity. We have people who are suffering uh, refugees, refugee status and hunger and poverty and all kinds of natural disasters and we, we get appeals for all of these things and we can get tired. I like the expression compassion fatigue. I'm tired of being compassionate and in a sense that's quite understandable. We become overwhelmed and you say, well what can I do? You know, I'm only one person. And I think there's a lot that one person can do. In fact, it all starts with one single person. I remember when I was younger, there was a television program called The Christopher Hour. Uh, Father James Keller, a marrying old priest, was very innovative in using the new development of television to evangelize. And at the end of the program, they had a visual of a candle being lit, and, lit, and the over voice said, it is better to light one candle than to curse the darkness. And if everyone lit just one little candle, what a bright world this would be. I also was taken by the uh, slogan, the motto of uh, public service announcement by the United Negro College Fund. A mind is a terrible thing to waste. And I thought collaterally, a person is a terrible thing to waste. And so it happens that the uh, Unbound organization uh, it was developed 35 years ago by a farm family from Kansas City, Kansas, of uh, uh, parents and their four, four children, now adults. The children had been in mission, some of them in mission work, and they gathered together in their home and they said, how can we develop something that will connect people with the poor in a very personal way and in an ongoing basis? And so what they came up with well, in a very, 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 uh, what do you call, rudimentary way in their garage, they started an organization that was the Christian Foundation for Children and Aging. Some of you may know that from previous years because you may have had some experience with that and as they have uh, made appeals to parishes in all of those years. But in the last four or five years, they changed the name to Unbound, which is good because it means 
in a sense, unbinding people, releasing them from the, from the, from the tangles of poverty. And so <coughs> uh, there's a sense in which they develop this power of relationships, to partner with a particular person with a monthly uh, support contribution and a correspondence of letters back and forth, translation services available. Their mission is consistent with the Gospels, which are very heavy on, God, on God's care for the poor. And uh, the uh, church uh, is supposed to be a church of the poor, as Pope Francis keeps reminding us, to be transformed through compassion and learn from the poor. The beneficiaries of the unbound sponsorship are not only those individuals, but also the families to which they belong in the communities in a wider sense. As they gather to uh, support one another and develop goals. It's a self-directed uh, sense of uh, empowerment. It's kind of like the Catholic Campaign for Human Development where it says, we want to give people not a handout, but a hand up. Give them some way in which they can self-direct their goals and, and, and focus some um, strategy to uh, uh, realize their dream. Many families want their children to have an education. In many countries, maybe education is available for a very few, or if so, it's not very good, or they, or they drop out very early age to get married or to work in the fields or whatever it is. And some don't have the ability to go on to school, which some, it costs money and the clothing and so forth. So lots of things can, just a little thing can make a difference in, in people. Some families have, their, have, a, have a, ch a child go on to college, first time in their family. Many of the people who have become unbound part, uh, participants become uh, helpers and people who are staff members of the communities that are served. Unbound doesn't just send money to those people, but it also helps them to direct the sense in which they gather and also focus their, their goals and, and aspirations. So, how has this happened? It happens because people have selected people to become uh, their, uh, to sponsor. So I have a sample here of the folders that we have in the back of many who are seeking to be sponsored. This one particular is, boy's name is Duvan. He's a seven-year-old boy and he is from Colombia. And do, if you uh, look on the inside, you will see a very brief description of Duvan and what he likes to do, and uh, what his family is like. He attends school, approximately three miles from home, rides the bus to get there. He likes to study mathematics, technology, Spanish, and English, and uh, he loves playing soccer and dancing. His health is good, and so forth. Parents like to read these things to their children because it says, his jobs at home are making the bed, washing the dishes, and sweeping. So, <laughs> well, mother, uh, show that to a child she says, look, he even does that. So, but I've had mother, I, have a, I had a, a woman come up to me and she said, you know, I always wanted a granddaughter. And I never did. And so this person can become my granddaughter. <clears throat> Another person came up and said to me, I am, a, I am a sponsor because I lost a daughter at a very young age. And I found a girl on your, on your, on your, among your collection here who could be a living memorial to my daughter. And so she's been connected with that person for some years now. Many sponsors see their persons continue uh, throughout and then uh, graduate out of the program, so to speak, with a sense of independence and empowerment. So it's funded by individuals such as yourself, 260,000, as I said, are doing this, some of them doing multiple sponsorships. Uh, we have in our parish here today present Merrill, Merle and Marilyn Kilberg, uh, who are uh, sponsors, and they're here to assist us after Mass to answer any questions you have and share their experience. Sponsored, the sponsors are enthusiastic about what they have learned to do. Parents may find sponsorships to be an educational tool for, their, for themselves as well as for their children can be a way in which you can become aware of the larger world. So uh, how many of those in this parish are sponsors or have been sponsors in the past? Because I know Unbounders or the CFCA has been here in past years. 
I know, I, if you see, I see a few hands up there, so in a sense, you are aware of that, and I know that many of you are uh, likely to be sponsors of other organizations uh, in, who also connect with people in a very personal way, and so you're all to be praised and, and encouraged and thanked for that. But if you wanted to do this, you would fill out your name on the information form we have, and then you might indicate the kind of payment. How much is it? Well, we ask that you give a minimum of $36 a month. Uh, you can give more if you wish. You can uh, designate how you wish to make the payment. If you'd like to make an upfront first payment, we would like to have that to facilitate the processing. You may have a check or you may have a check number or routing number you could give us right now for your automatic withdrawal, credit card uh, payments or whatever. Or you can just simply say, bill me at the bottom and then you can negotiate that later with the unbound office, how you would like to structure your payments. But then you can begin your correspondence with, with, with whomever you pick, take the folder home. We ask you not take the folder home unless you've all signed out for that particular person. So the anxiety might be, I can't finish my, I can't, I can't follow through on that after a period of time, for whatever reason. And so you would notify the office and they would connect that person who you, whom you sponsor with another, another uh, sponsor, so the person isn't left just hanging there. You may also be, wish to give a cash donation. We have uh, information available or envelopes for that. You also will have in your, in, in your bulletin uh, an insert. I hope, you've all, I hope your bulletin has this inside. They've been in, in most of the bulletins. We'll give you uh, information about how to connect to the Unbound website. It's rich and, and interactive in terms of showing you all the different ways uh, people Unbound is operating around the world, 19 different countries, as I mentioned. You can even request at a later date, if you can't make that decision now, uh, to, to assist you in connecting you with a sponsor, either by telephone or by uh, make, or just indicating the, the, uh, uh, the desire to do so and, and sending it in. So I hope you check out the website certainly after you, uh, when you get, when you have the opportunity. Unbound is highly rated by the Charity Watch organizations. Some people are skeptical of how efficiently their money is used. So I hope that you appreciate that Unbound is, is highly rated by like the, the Better Business Bureau and Charity Watch and uh, all those and, and uh, great nonprofits and those rating organizations. Those uh, People who are the big rollers in terms of Bill Gates and Michael Bloomberg who like to give money to m make a difference in people's lives, sometimes will find criteria that are very consistent with the unbound. Is there a personal connection? Is there ambition, clarity of desired result? Will it move the needle? Realistic and, stra and lo logical strategies and is improvement, in learning and improvement built in? All of these are, are part of the of the nature of the unbound uh, uh, um, uh, enterprise or project. So I encourage you to uh, consider it very seriously. You can take the time to explore the available possibilities. You might uh, favor a person, a, fa a country. Maybe there's a person who is, has the same birth date as someone in your family. Maybe there's a, a way in which you might be caught by an engaging smile of someone who uh, looks at you from his or her picture. You may not be able to be an actual missionary. Uh, you know, a lot of people have that say, I would, that would have been neat, but I just can't do it. But you can be present to someone in a special way. You can make a difference in a person's life. You'll be mutually blessed, and for a little bit less, or a little bit more than a dollar a day, you can be enriched many fold. God's <coughs> love for us is very generous. In the gospel today, Jesus said, God, sh the sun shines on the the just and the unjust alike, and so does it rain and so forth, but God is uh, an equal benefit uh, giver. And in a sense, that's part of the perfection of God. So we, we hope that we might have a sense of openness and uh, catch on to the generosity which is God's initial gift to us. Uh, if Paul said it to the Corinthians today, that we are to become fools in the eyes of the world. The eyes of the world tend to have a sense of uh, all for myself and uh, 
you know, that kind of stuff, and, and uh, eye for an eye. And in a sense, Paul is saying, appear to be foolish because if you trust in God's generosity, God will reward you more than you could ever imagine. Uh, that's uh, something that we come to over a period of time. We're becoming perfect, I think. Be perfect, become, per become full, become complete. Because at the end of Matthew's gospel, it's summed up so well in that last scene, that last judgment. I was hungry, thirsty, and in need, and you responded to my need. Because you did this to the least of my little ones, you did it to me. Come and enter into the kingdom prepared for all those who are perfect and complete in the eyes of God. Let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, all things visible and invisible. I believe in the one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father of all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten God. God's generosity and, and uh, care for us in all ways, we confidently make these our prayers. That the church may continue to call all people to enter into the holiness which God wants to bestow on all who draw close to him. We pray to the Lord. Our prayer. For peace among nations and for the leaders of government, that all may work for universal peace and prosperity, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Hear our prayer. That God's grace may enable all people to see that even the smallest children, those yet unborn, are reflections of his glory and called to be temples of his Holy Spirit, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Hear our prayer. For all our enemies and anyone who may have wronged us, or hurt us deliberately. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. That all who serve in the military may be blessed with wisdom and courage and may inspire many others to greater generosity in the service of their country. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For this parish community, that God's spirit dwell in our hearts we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our Lord hear our prayer. For all the people of our parishes who have died. And Ernest, or Lawrence Ernst, who is being remembered in this Mass, that they may know the fulfillment of God's promise of eternal life and everlasting joy. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our Lord hear our With thankfulness and hope, we make all these prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. 
Our song for the preparation of the gifts is number 487, Dwelling Place, number 487. brothers and sisters, that your sacrifice and mine may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands, for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and of all this holy church. As we celebrate your mysteries, O Lord, with the observance that is your due, we humbly ask you that what we offer to the Father, to the honor of your majesty, may profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by his birth, he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state. By his suffering, in hand, in, uh, canceled out our sins. By his rising from the dead, he has opened the way to eternal life. And by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. So with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise as without end we acclaim.
bond of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread. celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Michael, our Archbishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your faith. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. The Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. And look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace.
the Lamb of God, if we withhold him who takes away the sins of the world, blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my room, but only save my soul. Our song for communion is number 663, Loving and Forgiving, number 663. Heaven's soul. 
Let's pray. Amen. Our closing hymn is number six forty one. We belong to you, number six forty one. to find their purpose. 